Hello and welcome back. This is my second video where I'm taking you through my brand new Google Ads optimization checklist. And this is my newly launched checklist that I put together that I use to optimize all of my Google Ads campaigns. And these are campaigns that are running budgets from anywhere from $300 a month all the way up to $750,000 a month. So the great thing about this checklist is that it's scalable and it is still highly, highly practical regardless of the size of campaign budgets that you are currently managing. And this also covers all of the different campaign types that you will be using in Google Ads, including search, shopping, performance max, display, video, and also demand gen. And if you wanna get access to my brand new Google Ads optimization checklist, just follow the link in the description below. And what we are also gonna do is, let's now jump into a screen share so I can take you through some extra actions that you can complete with optimizing your Google Ads campaigns in 2024 and also throughout 2025. Let's go. All right, so if you saw part one of this series, I've already taken you through how the optimization checklist works, but let's focus on today our performance max display, demand gen, and video campaigns. In the first video, we went through some core actions for search and shopping. The big thing to note with these type of campaigns, so performance max, display, demand gen, and video, is that the main targeting, it's got not as much to do around about keywords. So especially performance max, it is still based off search themes. You can add some keyword targeting to your display campaigns, but especially when we get into demand gen and video and also display, it's more looking at the placements, where your ads are showing and who they're showing to. So it's really leveraging off more of your audience, your own data, and also the different placements of the ads. So the big action that we really wanna be focusing on in these is these placement results. And in the display campaign, it's by your content placements, demand gen, it's also content placements, and video is also your content placements. Now, the way that we go through and do this, let's firstly start with a performance max campaign. Now, the performance max campaign campaign does give you an extra level of data. So I'm gonna show you through here in the Performance Max campaign, you actually wanna go through and do a search for what's called a Performance Max campaigns placement. The way that we do that, and I'll put it in here, you go to Insights Report Editor. So let's go to Insights, into Report Editor. And then from here, we wanna do what's called a Performance Max placements. You can see I use it regularly, so that's why you see it at the top. If not, go to where and where ads showed, and then you click on that. If you've used it before, you'll see it already appear. Now, what happens from here is you can only see it by impressions. So it is important to note that you're just seeing it by impressions. You can't add in extra click data or conversion data. But what we're really looking at doing here is if we're seeing any conversions which are not relevant. Now, the way that you really balance this out is that if you're running a Performance Max campaign and you really are seeing that you're getting a lot of low level conversions and you're also noticing that your spend is not between search and shopping. So if you really see that you are getting more a high level of spending on the display network, what you can do is you can come and do this performance max campaigns placement report. And what I do is I download these into a CSV file. And then from there, once you've got the URLs you wanna add, go into your audience's keywords and content, and then when you're in content, what you can do is you can go into your exclusions, edit the exclusions and add them in by campaign level. And what I've done through here is I can show you that this is just on our Performance Max campaign again. And what we've already gone through and done is we've added in some extra content exclusions. So that's how you do it in the Performance Max campaign. For a demand gen campaign, the way that you can go through and do this is if you go, as you can see, we're looking at a demand gen campaign, go into insights and reports, go to where and when ads showed, and then where ads showed and then it's very much the same process you're downloading this from here into a csv or a google sheet and then from here you're going into content and then once again you can see here we've added in all of these exclusions so once again what we're doing here is we're removing the poor quality sites which we know are just not going to convert then also for a video campaign it's pretty much the same process so insights and reports where and when ads showed, over here, where ads showed, and then we're going once again down to that content. So that's how you go through the process of reviewing your placements and then adding in extra exclusions. Now what I wanna do, let's jump down into the, we've done something on targeting, let's do something about ads and landing pages. We'll focus on ads. And what you really wanna be doing in through here is there's some different options here in the way that this works. In Performance Max, they give us a score rating, which I'll show you. Now for display campaigns, if you're running two ads, you can do split testing or you can do the performance ranking. And I'll show you both now. And then also before we go, I'll also show you how to review your video 
campaigns and really look at the difference there. So let's go into the ads now. This is for a demand gen campaign. And the first thing what we're really looking at in through here is if you haven't added this metric when you're in a demand gen, I wanna go into the columns, modify columns, and if you just write the text 25, you'll see video played too. Now, what this starts to give us, and this campaign has only been running for seven days, so we're not looking at making any changes yet, but what we can look at through here is we're looking at seeing how far this video was played. So 25%, 50%, 75%, 100%. Now, obviously what we would like to be seeing is we'd like to see the video playing to the end to be as high as possible because then we know that that's an early sign of engagement. Now, as I said, this campaign's only seven days old. We've only got a couple of conversions in there. So we need to see some more data there. But what we can already start to see is we can start to see that this angle, the second version of the video is performing the best so far. So at the 30 day mark, what we would then do is let's go into demand gen. What we would do is after we've looked at this data in through here, we could come back and record new videos with updated introduction introductions, hooks, and call to actions to see which videos are performing the best and which video types are driving the highest number of conversions. Important to remember with demand gen for success is very much around the quality of the ad. So that's how you can do some split testing in demand gen. Let's go through to here. So this isn't a display campaign. And I wanna show you the two different ways that you can go through and check your ad quality in the display campaign. Now, firstly, with this campaign, they've only got one ad per ad group. So the way that you go through and do this is, let's go to ads, so I'll just go back a screen. And where you go from here, let's go into one ad group. What you're doing in through here is you're going through and you're viewing the asset details. And what you're looking at in here is the performance column. And then anything that says low, I would be going through and updating either the image or updating updating the headline and just working off that low tag. So you can see in here for display, you're changing, you know, if you're not running two ads per ad group, update any assets with a low performance ranking. The other way of doing this is if you run two ads in an individual display ad group, which is the process that I still prefer and run, is what you can actually do very similar to the way that you do an ad copy split test in a search campaign. You're just looking at the raw data. And from here, we can see that this is our clear winner of our different image styles. It's got a high interaction rate and it's also got better conversion metrics where it's in at 21%. So they're the two options that you can complete your split testing for display campaigns. Now, when it comes to performance max, let let me show you an example in here. When you're in Performance Max, the only thing that you can do is that when you're in your asset groups, if you go into your view details, once again, you can do that ranking by performance. So whether it's seeing its best, good. Now we've got some ones that are not applicable because we've just gone through and made some changes. So if you see anything with a low, you go through, edit those headlines or those images, and then wait for the new ranking to come through. And that's how you complete that ad copy testing for your Performance Max campaigns. And there's some of the optimization actions that you can complete for your Performance Max display and demand gen campaigns. Now, as I said at the start of the video, if you want access to my updated Google Ads optimization checklist, and as I said, this is newly launched. So if you've got some of my older versions, this one is the most current and up to date. All you need to do is to follow that link in the description below. And I hope as always that this will be a great benefit to you and you optimizing your Google Ads campaigns. Now, if you'd also like to see some extra videos about how we go through and optimize our campaigns, go through and watch my optimization series here. And as always, thank you for joining me and thank you for your support. And I look forward to seeing you on my next video. See ya.